Let's come down to the other one, which is the big blue button. So I'm going to turn editing on. OK. Now, I did a lecture one online with my student. I gave them the note. Now, I'm, uh, next week, I'm going off for conference. So I cannot do the lecture in class. So I'm sitting in my conference in some way in, in, in yeah. some Middle East or Dubai or wherever, and then, or in Japan. And then you have a big blue button. So you create, add an activity or resource, and then you use this one. It's called big blue button. Okay, now I, many of the lecturers in the morning had doubt regarding the speed. I will check for the speeds, okay? So if you are participating as a student, you need to have a handphone or a device in your system. Sorry, I just canceled the call. Huh? So this is from Profong. Profong, I cannot take Profong's call. Sorry. So you use big blue button, okay? Okay, let me go step by step. So big blue button, add, add, add the big blue button. Okay, so if, if Prof Fong calls just answer and tell him we are doing Takli Mata, he may call the phone. He yeah. called us. Okay, thank you. Sorry, the phone from Prof Fong. Okay, so this is called Big Blue Button. Now, what is the Big Blue Button essentially? It's actually a Kulia, a room, a, a Kulia which you create. Okay, it's a virtual classroom. So Big Blue Button is different from Skype and Zoom and everything else. This is actually a virtual classroom which is existing in a server, it's only there when you create it at that time. It's not there after that. Imagine that your classroom, and it's now this classroom is used for our PP session. So when I go out and somebody else takes over, it's a different class. So the big blue button works in that. That's why it can serve, it can do uh, speed very fast, what do you call access. The speed is quite fast. So with the development of the smart classroom, This is actually the smart classroom. So you don't you don't have to have a smart classroom. It's actually using your yourself as you become the smart classroom. Your device becomes the smart classroom. Okay. So without having the of course the smart classroom will be more in terms of the efficiency of recording will be better. But this is basically giving you an alternative to that. Okay. So this is what you do. So what you need to do is you need to give it. It says virtual classroom name. It's virtual means it exists only in the virtual space, and you give it a name. So this will be lecture two, lecture two, and then you need to send. Notification. This one is very important because the student will know when the lecture is. Okay? You go down, activity room settings. Activity room setting can give it a message. Welcome, welcome to the class on so and so. Wait for moderator. You don't have to click all this. So you have recording settings. Okay. Okay. This is a sensitive one. Okay. So if you don't want the student to edit it, don't if you don't want the student to record your lecture, don't put any setting here. Otherwise the student can record. So the setting is change, huh? So just this, okay. Uh, don't do session can be recorded, but okay because some of the lecturer may say, okay, I'll give you an example of how it's used in different contexts. If you are teaching safe subject, biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics is safe, but suppose you are teaching some political subject which has you say something in class, right, and which may be oh, something which is sensitive issue, public health or whatever. Don't ask this, allow the student to record. Because if you say something, they can hold, I mean, you know how people manipulate nowadays, so <laughs> please don't you click record. But for now, right, because we want to show a recording uh, demo, we will click session can be recorded. Other Zool cannot show you how to demo the recording, okay? No setting can be edited. All participants, you can add. Suppose you made two groups in your class. Group one will listen to session one, and group two will listen to session two. You can select here as well. But you need to create group. Okay, so this is all user. So all users are enrolled. Schedule. This is the important button, which is schedule. So this schedule will follow your replacement class. Okay, but remember something. This is using Malaysian standard time, which is our local host server in UMS. So if you are in Japan, it's to one hour. How many hours ahead? So if your lecture is nine to eleven, you make sure that it's set here for Malaysian standard time, not for the your local host in Japan. Or if you are in USA. You may have to give the lecture in midnight. So it's a 12 hour, how many hours? You say 12 hour, right? Uh, 12 hour. So if you're on the east, I, I also don't know. I'm just assuming. But remember something. It's for Malaysia standard time. So you set the time. For example, today lecture between, uh, for example, you need to enable this. So you have the setting here, okay? So you have the time you need to set. So session open and close. So now I'm disabling it. So we don't get into the time loop. Okay, so you need to enable this. So common module settings is there and restrict activities and activities. So this one you don't change. You have activity completion, okay? Activity completion means, again, you need to click that. So if you don't do this, you won't get attendance. You need to say, student show activity as complete when conditions are met. Means student watch the whole lecture. 
then only the condition is met. So maybe the, that's why some lecturers say maybe the student will switch on the phone and go away, and then the lecture is. So, but that's their. I mean, that's their domain. Okay, and then you show. Okay, so tags. Go down, Zul. Tag. Okay, tag means. What a tag does is it hashtag to another location. It makes it searchable on Google. For example, you want your lecture to be searchable on Google or on Twitter or other feed, Facebook live feed, you can actually hashtag it to that account. You can hashtag and then it will be visible. But I don't think we want that because our class is actually private and competency. Actually, this one we will teach you in the IDP course. We need your table for competency means suppose they achieve, watch that particular session, they will achieve the LO1. For example, LO1, so you can see, and also the competencies, C1, C2, C3, C4, your domain, you can actually set with this. But we won't do that now because we need to set it one time for the whole system. So when you come for the IDP uh, training, we'll teach you how to set competency for the whole system. So when that, when that student complete that activity, they achieve LO1, <laughs> and then the next one, LO2, and so on and so forth. So we can do it in the system. Uh, but I don't know how you link to your PLO, the CLO you can achieve. SMP, no, no, this one won't link to the SMP. So at the end of the day, you'll have to print out whether they achieve the competency or not. Because this is actually going into something which uh, many of us are not uh, familiar with. Have you heard of the concept of digital badging? Actually, some of you all who attended Educator 4.0 will know that digital badging concept. So digital badging, actually now, for example, see, suppose my student finishes their uh, program, the whole program, they graduated. They go to the employer with your sigil and they say, oh, I got A plus in this and a B, B plus in this, right? But the, like, the person who's the employer does not know the competency of the student for, for their soft skill. So digital badging allows you to actually incorporate the soft skill into a badge. The badge comes in their, they can put it in their account, like their LinkedIn, LinkedIn or CV account, and when the employer clicks on the digital badge, they will see all the assignments and everything else. It's a new form of digital, uh, how do you say, identity for the student. Yeah, when badge. The badge. So the badge will actually carry on your, C, on your CV. So if you, uh, any of you are using li LinkedIn, link, LinkedIn or LinkedIn, so in, link, uh, in that one you can actually have digital badges incorporated inside. And those badges are endorsed using blockchain. For example, you have a badge in your, uh, in your CV, right? And then you have four lecturers who knew, knew you well. You just email them, please endorse my badge. So they will endorse your badge and your badge value will increase. So, uh, like so, so that's the new way people are looking at things. In fact, that day some students applied for RA, RA position and they, from the other university, I think from UMT, and then they had digital badges in their CV, I was surprised. They actually used digital badging, okay? We will be doing a training on digital badging as part as, of IDP as well. Okay? So, we'll, you can attend it if you want to. Okay, so now your class is ready and then you click save and return to the course. Okay, and we wait for a while and we refresh. Okay, so this is something which is entirely new in our system. The big blue button, so you save, it will look for the server host. Okay, so once Zool has completed the refresh, you can click. Now don't click on the big blue button because it won't link to the server. Do any of you use the online teaching system using video conferencing? Any of you using? No. Is it because it's difficult? Is that the reason why you don't use Difficult to use it? Uh, I, I tried a lot that uh, you have to start uh, commuting thematic. <coughs> thematic. Yeah, yeah, the thematic. thematic yeah. Yeah. It's difficult to... It, it, it's quite a um, long-winded kind of... Of procedure. Oh, okay. From you to the country. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So this one... Back and forth. Back and forth, yeah. Then the lecturer loses. You cannot focus on your actual lecture, right? This one is ready, so it takes some time. You can wait for it to load. Okay, so when it's loading, uh, Zul, can you open up big blue button, Zul? Okay, so big blue button. Okay, let it load, it's loading, it's, it's uh, setting the configuration. Okay, so if you want to avail of the lecture features, all of us, all of us means lecturer, we need to have a big blue button account. Okay, big blue button is, as you can see, it's not commercial, it is .org. It's an organization website. It's free to use and it's open source. So you need to create an account. The way you create is basically you try this one. You try now. Big blue button. So big blue. And then you can log in and you can sign in or sign up. You can sign up here. And then your account will be uh, there. Okay. So your account will be created in big blue button. You can create classes. 
Okay, now regarding your security precaution for you for yourself, this is a security uh, what notification for you. Please do not use the same password as you use for UMS for third-party software. Okay, this is a third party. So big blue button is third-party H5P. Please do not use the same password for these two external platforms which you use for UMS just to protect yourself. So in case there's a break, it will basically cause uh, issue with the system. In case there's a hack. You will get hacked through. You can use the same email, but don't use the same password. Okay, so that's about it. So now the big blue button is active here. So the le lecture will come like that. Biru, uh, blue with B. Okay, B, so it's blue, blue. Okay, uh, Zul will refresh. Okay, we'll try it out in class if you have a problem regarding speed. Refresh, okay. And now he's going to, you can log in. You can click, refresh your screen, respective screen. And you log into big blue, you should see three dots. You'll see three dots, a black screen and three dots. Can you see this? You should see that once you click. Join session, right? Join session. Join session with headphone, not with microphone. Otherwise, it will create uh, chatter. You must instruct your student join as with, micro with a headphone only. OK? OK. So you can see that as a student. Zul is the lecturer. He's seeing the screen. OK? So you're seeing the screen. OK. So let's see what you see first. This, uh, all your students, the record of your students is here. So all your students come in here. Yeah, so you can see Dr. Dennis, Dr. Narkin. Okay, you can see. These are the students logging in, in your class. Okay? Okay, now remember something with this. They can be sitting in their asrama, they can be sitting in their kampung, they can be sitting on the bus station, and they can watch you as long as they have connection to Wi-Fi. Okay? Listen only. I'll you listen only as a student. Okay? Zul will join with microphone. Okay. Now, you try something. Uh, you see the chat window. You just have, hi, hello, hello. You can type in hello, good morning or anything, whatever you want. I'll show you how it works. Oh, so, you see, this is your chat window. Okay. So, the student can, okay. Uh, oh, professor, oh, doctor, I did not understand slide number two. Can you repeat? <laughs> it comes in here. Okay. So, you can see their feedback here. Okay. So this captured in this feedback. Okay. So for now we close this. We will close the chat as this creates distraction. Okay. Yeah. You can also join in with video. So Zul will join with video. So Zul. Okay, Zul will join with video. Allow. Okay. That's because some of you join with uh, microphone. Yes, yeah, microphone. So you're getting the feedback from your own microphone in the class. <laughs> That's why we instruct your student, please instruct your student, join only as listener. Don't join as user. Zul can mute it, but it's good because you have 100 students. You cannot keep muting everyone. <laughs> you cannot mute, OK? So Zul is there. Now you can see the lecturer over here. Lecturer is here, OK? If any of you all have camera, you can see your lecture, you can see yourself popping up here. Okay. Regarding precaution for you, okay, again, this is also your digital rights. Please do not uh, use your camera if you feel uh, like it's going to be a threat to your identity, okay? So because now with facial recognition in China, they have 20,000 people in the classroom, oh, in the, in the, so you can mute it, mute, mute it, mute, 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 mute all. Uh, mute, mute everything, mute all user, okay. Okay. So you can mute all users, so basically it won't create feedback. Okay, so basically regarding use of face, okay, so we use our face for many things online, but please be aware that there is facial recognition system nowadays, technology has come in, and you can be picked up and you can be used for unlocking phones and everything else. Those things are possible. So you need to use precautions. So for this one, if you really want to show your face, because students need to show your face, please set the camera resolution very low, so it will become like not really clear, okay, if you feel. Okay, or you can wear glasses if you're not wearing glasses, so basically the facial recognition. But now, now, nowadays, now, no, it's very scary because it's... You, you can close. Close, close, close. Turn off, turn off, turn off. Can turn off. No, no, don't do that. This is because of data privacy. Earlier, this issue was not there. Everyone was showing their face on the Facebook everywhere. Now, you have to be uh, careful because uh, two years ago, I think in China, they can identify from a stadium of 20,000 people, they can identify one person who has 
basically so you have to be careful and then that identity can be used for identity theft so you be careful with this it's just a precaution that's what i just give you a information regarding the usage of face okay now zul needs a lecture right he needs to upload so how do you upload you press this button here. everything is blue so you add and zul will add a presentation here okay so he'll add upload okay let me upload my lecture so here let's when you upload just just drag and drop okay regarding this one right also another th another thing you should note please do not use powerpoint slide for this because the animation in powerpoint will not play you only use pdf you convert your powerpoint to pdf for this part will upload okay so he uploaded a pdf file so you can use it to share anything from you can add uh, are you add this molecular genetics you try and add the lecture this one is molecular gen Genetics, right, sir? This one you added? Yeah. Uh, okay, okay, okay. It's okay. You can add. This table for just add. Uh, there'll be a lecture. Any lecture will be used. That's good. No PowerPoint is there. Other PowerPoint. We just add a PowerPoint. One second. Okay. Just add, just add anyone, anyone, any, any, any PDF. You add PDF. Any PDF. Just yeah, yeah. Okay, anything. Actually, I had one molecular genetics lecture, so delete, delete that, delete yeah. Add. Create. So you need to do this because it takes time when your class starts. Okay, so you will spend some time doing this. And then you upload. Okay. Okay. So this is a PDF he has uploaded. He wants to show you. Okay. There's only one slide, right? So, so suppose I'm showing the students a slide, a slide note. Okay. So now Zul can move up. He can talk. He can. The students can watch all this and listen to it. Okay. But the good thing about it is you. This one can also enable you to present. Okay. So make anyone the presenter. So we make do, Mr. Amin. Okay. Amin Dudli. Okay. Okay. Make presenter. Okay. Now. Uh, the student has control. Now, Mr. Amin can control. You can control the slide. You can move your cursor on the slide. Okay. So he is the presenter now. So, for example, you show your student slide one, slide two, and then suddenly you stop. You say, "Okay, can you please explain uh, slide number four in detail?" So the student takes over. They can speak and become control. So now he has control over the slide. Okay. So the student. So you can take away his control. Can you see it, Mr. Amin? Yeah, you can I see, right? Cursor. Okay, you can annotate the slide. You can basically annotate. Do you have a mouse? You can actually use this button. Move here, we, because we cannot see this. Only you can. Oh. So you 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 use this one. You click on this. You click on this, and then you select a pen, a pen, and then you draw on that. You just um, you'll have you may have to click and draw. You can click. You can click and draw, like how you click on the mouse. Right, click and draw. You can you can click and draw. I think you have to use two finger right to click. So he is actually now controlling the slide. You annotate. Can you draw? Can you mark on the slide? Draw? Can you just draw? Just usually you have to right click and draw. And then you draw. No, you cannot? Okay, because you need a mouse. So Zul will take control. Zul, you control and you annotate. Okay, Zul will control. He will take control back. So Zul takes presentation again and then you mark. So you have a button here which lecturers see. Actually the lecturer can see this. You click, click and then you can select. You can draw on the slide, you can mark note, you can draw circles. Okay, select pen, pen and you need a mouse and then you can mark the slide. So you can draw on the slide directly. Okay, so you can annotate the slide live. So the student can see you actually annotating the slide. So you explain point number one and then you mark point number two and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's basically recording the slide. And if you want the student to annotate, you can do what I did, give control. Do any of you all have a mouse in the, okay. Okay, so what is your name, Dr. I, I don't recall. Okay, okay. Okay, I cannot see. Very small, I cannot, okay, this one, right? Okay, take control. You have control on the presentation. You can mark, you can mark. You see the the hand the hand symbol hand symbol move see the hand symbol at the side on the side at the side doctor there there at the side sana there 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 yeah just click 
You select one. Select one. Select a pen. 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 Then click on the mouse and you can draw on the slide. Click. Click and right click or right left click. You can draw on the slide directly. You click, click and draw. Click and draw. Click and draw. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, okay. So, so you can see what she is doing on the slide. So you can see the marking on the slide. <laughs> what is the ethic? <laughs> so this Yeah, so then you can mark on the slide. You you can Tarbalik, <laughs> it's a, is it like reverse? What happened? Tarbalik? Oh, is it inverted? <laughs> okay, so you can delete it. You, you, you can also, if you are teaching some subject which requires shape, right? Geometry, you can actually draw the triangles and circles and whatever, whatever. So, so this is, you'll be surprised. Even the schools are using this system now. Yeah, we went to school which used this system. Okay, so Zul takes presentation again. Zul, become presenter. You can yeah, yeah, you can zoom by using the icon. Zul, zoom, zoom icon. You zoom there. Take presenter, uh, take presenter and then you zoom and then zoom on it. So this one can be used. We are showing only a single slide for example, but you can put in the multiple slide and you can run the whole presentation on slide. Okay. Now comes the part where you record. So if you want to record, for example, if some of you want to record it as tab for table four, for your sorry for your course file, you actually click here. You click start recording. Okay. And then it will record. Yes. And then we do. So they will record. He, the, only the lecturer can record now. Okay. So the lecturer will record and he, he will store it in the file, in his file. And then you can uh, download in a pen drive and you can put it in your file. No, no, no. This one is only cannot. This one will go in your, in your, in your system over here in the big blue. But it's a good idea. You need to download. Please download and store it because this is a free platform. They may delete. So this is a free platform. So download and store in your system. If you want them, that's why when we started the lecture, we enabled recording. So you need to enable. If you disable recording, the student cannot record. That's to protect your rights. So it depends on your preference, doctor, whether you want them or not. Can you can do? So if you download the recording, okay, and then you say the recording, okay, you can just share share the recording with the student as MP4 video file. They will see exactly what we did. All the marking, annotation, everything will be there, exactly as it is in the system. Okay, so th this is the way in which you communicate. So once Zul finishes the recording, he just clicks stop. The recording is come and it saves. Yeah, you can report no. Yes, yes, you just stop. If the student click that button tomorrow, uh, this recording no. The, the lecture is today. Yeah. yeah. The button tomorrow, so Cannot. The the class will only exist. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> black, black black button. The class will only exist as long as you are active. That's why it's called virtual class. We don't want the student to come out, okay? But remember something about this. The last part is actually here. After you finish your class, always click here. And then you click here. This one is exit or end, right? End session, end session. End the meeting or end session. Don't log out. End the meeting first. If you don't end the meeting, your computer will be still active. Means the computer will keep on assuming that it's connected to big blue button. Whatever you say will finish. We go on and on and on. Whatever we talk will be recorded. In. So please, this is the very important one. End the meeting. End the meeting first before you log out. End the meeting. I remember, I think we should put this in a flow chart and give. This is the important button and then we... And then log out. Log out from the system. <laughs> okay, now the session is over. So you'll all turn, your screen will be black. Correct? So basically the class is over. So it's similar to a normal class. Only thing this one records, like it's like a, how do you say, it's a documentary evidence of your class is there inside. So for the record, if you, if you decide, if your students also feel that you want seven lectures face to face, this seven lecture face to face can be done here. 